Hi, Eric Gibois, EricGibois.com, and today I'm going to speak to you about this lens, this serial lens, anamorphic lens, 35 millimeter, 2.9T, 1.6 factor for full frame camera. Actually, I made a demo with the musical video. I'll leave you the link here and the making of, and I had to uh, still present the lens itself. So this is what we're going to do. So let's start. In the box, you will find uh, the lens that is perfectly uh, packed and protected and also a small pouch so you can uh, keep it in your bag in the pouch so it doesn't get dusty re re perfect okay so how does an anamorphic lens works well actually uh, the angle it covers is wider than your sensor so it needs to squeeze all the image in the sense size so when you look at your screen you will see that everything is squeezed you said well eric said it would be like wide and is it all squeezed that's a problem yes that's normal it has to fit everything in the in the sensor size and then in post-production you de-squeeze so you multiply by the factor in the horizontal and it will woof, and you will get the original size that was captured by uh, your lens okay the angle it was it was covering okay depends on the camera you're using uh, on this Lumix you actually have a de-squeeze preview so when I record I see it's nicer to have a look on what I do because I really see the way it will look at the end okay so it's a bit nicer but in case you would not have this facility on your uh, camera or maybe on external monitor that doesn't let you do it you will see everything squeezed and then it's only in post production you will see it f uh, open okay Obviously, if you use on a camera that makes a disc squeeze, that's nicer because you see exactly what you're doing, okay? But that's the way it works. You get wider than what your sensor allows to, you squeeze it in, and then you unsqueeze it, disqueeze it in post-production. I tested it with my Lumix S5 Mark II. This is a nail mount, but it is for full frame, and they have Canon RF. I know that many people think uh, you cannot build RF mount. This is for autofocus lenses, but this one is 100% manual, so you can have a Canon RF, Sony E, and a Nikon Z full frame, okay? The uh, optical formula is 18 elements in 13 groups. When we look at the aperture, it has 10 blades. It gives a bokeh, that's fine, that's okay. Uh, actually, on this 35 millimeter, the equivalent in full frame would be 22 millimeter because you will see it's a lot wider, okay? Normally, you don't look for this really shallow depth of field, but with the minimum distance, 90 centimeters, you do get uh, some uh, out of focus, and that's nice, that's okay. The most stunning part of this uh, lens is uh, not what it does, it's also for how much it does it, okay? It costs about 1500 euros, a bit less, now it's on off special offer, okay? But uh, normally on an number, so, so many people think 1500 euros for lens or 1300, that's a lot. No, that's not a lot for an anamorphic lens. Normally, uh, a cine lens, anamorphic cine lens, costs between 8,000 and 30, 35,000 euros. So uh, this is the uh, only affordable lens, I would say, okay? So thank you so much, Siri, for making this. So people, whether they're amateur or professional on a budget, they can still enjoy making anamorphic movies for uh, an affordable price, okay? So that's the best point, no doubt, no doubt, okay? So now we're going to look at the quality and the build and all this. To show you the big difference between a standard lens, this is a full frame lens for my Lumix S5 Mark II, the, two, uh, the 20 to 60 millimeter. I've put it on 35 millimeter, the same as uh, uh, the angle, by the focal length of the anamorphic lens I'm going to present you. So you get an idea, uh, you get an idea of the massive difference in angle that it, that is covered uh, by uh, the anamorphic lens. Okay, so I start recording, so it gives you an idea. So you understand the big advantage, or, well, advantage uh, or feature I would say of an anamorphic lens. The, the it's it is a lot wider. So uh, if you want to have this cine look or include more things in the scene, uh, that's possible. So that gives you an idea on the standard uh, full frame lens on 35 millimeter focal length. Now we're going to check on the anamorphic, okay? Now I've mounted the 35 millimeter anamorphic lens and you can check, I'm going to record right now. And now you can see how much angle you get in horizontal. Vertical is the same angle, okay? But right now with this anamorphic 35 millimeter, the equivalent is like a 22 millimeter, okay? So it means I can really include a lot more things in my, uh, in my frame. So it depends on what you want to do. Uh, it gives this uh, uh, cine look uh, 
by the format, but also by the amount of things you can include in the, in the frame. So depends what you want to do, but that's really interesting, honestly. When we speak about focusing, we speak very often about focus breathing, uh, especially in video. What is that? Well, when you focus, I'm going to record right now, you will notice that uh, it gets like a bit more angle or less angle uh, on the side, okay? And as you can see here on the left, there is an element that appears more or less, okay? Is it a problem? Well, it is if you want to have the exact framing regardless of uh, your focusing point, uh, the way you focus, that's a problem because maybe you, when you change your focus, you leave out some element you want or the other way around, some element you don't want to appear. So uh, I think on this lens, that's not much breathing anyway. I've seen a lot worse than this and I think uh, this is uh, quite controlled, okay? Obviously, the ideal situation would be no focus breathing at all. But uh, for that price range, we cannot complain. Obviously, if it was a, a lens that cost like 8,000, 10,000 or 15,000 uh, euros or more, like many anamorphic lenses, I would have uh, another uh, talk about it, okay? But on this one, I think it's completely acceptable, okay? When we look at cine lenses, for the first time, very, peop very often people are surprised by this small dance here. What is that? Well, this is what we call a geared lens. And what is that for? It is for cinema lenses. Actually, you have two on this one. You have one for the aperture and one for uh, the focusing because uh, I want to be able to focus manually but without my hand, okay? So here I've got a remote control uh, focus, uh, follow focus. I'll leave you the link here. I actually reviewed it and you can uh, I can be uh, framing here and someone is sitting there with a, a, a monitor and doing the focusing uh, in the distance, okay? So that's really great that you have this. I would say it's more than great, you actually need it. Actually, you could have two or three person working on, a, on, on the camera. One is making the framing, another one would be with an other uh, uh, remote control uh, system to uh, do uh, the aperture, and another guy would be working on the focusing, okay? So uh, as you can see on these lenses, you have both, uh, and this is industry standard, so really good. So let's look at the physical lens. Uh, this is completely uh, metal, fully metal. Uh, it weighs almost a kilo, so here you have, uh, I've put a support by small rig to support the lens, okay, so it doesn't uh, pull on the bayonet. As you can see, fully metal, here you have both uh, rings. One is for uh, the focusing, it goes from uh, 90 centimeters uh, up to infinity. It's written in imperial and in metrics, okay. Here you have the aperture ring. When we speak about aperture on a Photo lens, uh, we call f, f2.8, f4, all this. On cinema lens, this is different. We speak in T, trans transmission factor. What is that? Well, on a photo lens, for example, uh, one lens is 2.8, and then you have, you have another lens that is also 2.8, and you will notice that the exposure is not, is not always the same, doesn't let the same amount of light come in or come out. Maybe it's like a 3.0, or 2.9, or 3.2, okay? In cinema, uh, as we used to work only with film, uh, chemical films, that was a problem because uh, you would uh, change lenses and the exposure would be wrong and you will not notice until you develop the film. That would be a big problem, okay? So in cinema, we speak about transmission factor and it is guaranteed. When it says 2.9, it's 2.9. If you get another lens that says 2.9, it's exactly the same amount of light that will come in, okay? If it says 2.0, 4.0, whatever, it's exactly the same. It means when you change your lens, you can guarantee you will get the same amount of light in there. So here it goes from T 2.9 up to T 16, okay? So uh, you can really control, change lenses and all this without any problem. Then the size is about uh, 11, 12 centimeters long, okay? What I really like about these Siri lenses is they have uh, the whole set of Venice lenses and they all have the gear, uh, the gear placed in the same place. It means even if the lens is longer, when I want to change lenses, I just uh, unlock my uh, remote, uh, my uh, focusing, uh, follow focus, and then I can change lenses and I place it again and that's it. It's in the same place. If I've got the, the rings here, everything to support, whatever, I don't have to move anything. So this is really great because you work a lot faster. You don't have to balance anything again. That's made, that's done, that's 
that's it okay so really nice something also that is important not every lenses have uh, cinema lenses or anamorphic lenses have filter thread this one has an 82 millimeter filter thread so if you want to put a vnd on it you can and also you can without any problem place a matte box as i show you right now a matte box when you can include filters or uh, just cut light on the side or on the top or bottom as you want okay so really really uh, nice build really well made okay when you look here on the side it's written 35 millimeter t2.9 okay uh, so it gives you uh, the uh, transmission rate anamorphic full frame 1.6 x what is that well uh, the anamorphic factors tells you how much wider than the full frame uh, the original will be okay 1.6 is what you've seen you have 1.3 you have 1.8 2.0 the higher the number the more landscaped you will get your uh, frame and uh, the more elements you will include okay on this lens with this camera i get a rate of two uh two four one uh, ratio which is really nice for the look you get i don't like when it's really too wide i don't like when it's too narrow either i think 1.6 1.8 are really nice figures so 1.6 on this one i really like it okay as you can see the build is brilliant anamorphic will give you also a different look on the bokeh uh the light uh, points uh, are more oval they're not round okay so it gives really a nice look okay nice build really nice lens Without any doubt, what really attracts people uh, that want to use anamorphic lenses is not just the format, the landscape, the, the way how wide it is, it's also the flare. Anamorphic lenses they have two kinds of flares. You may have sometimes three, but normally you have gold or you have uh, blue. This one is blue, which is the most typical anamorphic look, okay? And uh, when you have a point of light, it will give you this uh, horizontal ray that gives something really special okay uh, as you can see on the the musical video i recorded it gives you this flare that is really typical anamorphic uh, look okay i really love it uh, obviously not everyone lo loves that but when you want to have a cine look normally uh, you would like to have that kind of flare in some situation in this one this is nice it's not too strong not too soft this is a nice uh, ray of light a nice flare you get okay so uh, as you can see that gives you this uh, atmosphere that looks really cinema okay when we speak about lenses many people think only about sharpness and i understand if you do macro photography or small plants or some depends on kind of picture you make sometimes sharpness is needed it gives a really strong look powerful to your image it's really powerful for your image okay but i think lately lately maybe several years now the monitor we use uh, the television set we use the cinema very often we see is too sharp too contrasty too artificial it's actually uh, better than what i see right now it's sharper than what i see right now and this is completely unreal and so, so it means that when you want to make cinema you don't want this uh, massive sharpness that gives something that is unreal uh, like you think the actor is going to uh, use a knife and cut you by high off jumping out of the screen no we don't want that okay so what i like about this lens is sharp enough but not too sharp to look unreal so i really like the way it looks this is just a sharpness i like enough to be uh, nice and not too much to be unreal i really love it well my conclusion honestly i think uh the magic of what siri has done is that now we can afford that kind of lenses many people want to do uh, this cine look this anamorphic look you have uh, anamorphic lenses for a smartphone i've presented some but honestly it's not the same thing the quality is you can do great thing with a smartphone but this is another story the feeling the way you work the way you think is really different okay so uh at last you are able to play with that work with that uh, and pay for it okay because uh, obviously uh, 8000 30000 25000 lens uh, euro uh, lens is just out of my budget and out of budget for most people you could probably rent it but maybe uh, a week of renting the same price as this lens so at last you can uh, try to do some things that are different 
Obviously, you don't have to do just cinema or video. You can actually do photo with an amorphic lens with a different look, okay? You'll have to do the disquiz also, but that's also possible. But what I love is that it helps you think different. Think uh, out of your uh, comfort zone in a different way, really wider, really nice. I actually have two lenses. I've got the 35 millimeter and the 100 millimeter also uh, separately, okay? Uh, this one I keep it, the 100 millimeter, I have to give it back. Well, I'm, I'm trying to negotiate so they leave it to me also to make more uh, video of it, okay? But I really love the look, the way it works, everything. So obviously, if you're not into video, you're not into cinema, maybe you're not much interested, but maybe you were thinking of starting to do some uh, short uh, film or a video clip, and you think, wow, that's different, that's different than what everyone is doing and uh, I would be interested, so maybe give it a try. It's still, it's affordable, okay? Obviously, uh, take into account, but if you want to make video, you already know this, that you will probably to do, get some extra gear, like I've got the follow focus here, maybe, uh, here I'm, I've not placed a monitor, I've got also a battery here, all this, it's not placed here, just so you actually see the lens itself, okay? But everyone who wants to make a bit more advanced video, they know they have many accessories they get anyway, okay? But the main piece that is here, which is the lens itself, is at last affordable. So thank you so much, Siri, for giving us the opportunity to uh, use that kind of lenses. Uh, other prices are basically out of reach for most of us, I mean, include myself, okay? So really happy to have uh, this kind of lens, okay? So for me, it's completely recommendable is a lens that costs 30,000 euros 30 times better than this? I don't know, I've never tried, okay? But what I get out of this is fine. I don't even want to try the 30,000 one just in case I would love it, okay? So I think this is fantastic, completely re recommendable. So if you're interested, I'll leave you a link in the description on where you can buy it. So thank you so much, Siri, for a uh, Siri. Some people say Siri, okay, I say Siri, okay. I don't know, okay? Thank you so much for sending me the lens. Thank you to you for watching the video. If you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, small button down here, so small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, ericgipo.com. If you have any question, you can leave a comment below. I'll also leave you links of my on Amazon, links of everything I reviewed by Kev Concepts, Sandmark, and Flashes by Westcott. More affiliated links including the Siri one, okay? And also a link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. Thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.